people, welcome back to my channel, and I decided to read a fan fiction with the champions. Uh, I'm gonna go with order this time because last the last fan fiction I read like chapter 23, and it's I suggest you go like chronological chronology order like first is Ballard and Pearson and Dyson and Crusher. So I decided to go with like an order, and if I read like randomized orders, it's like I I will get confused. So this says this fanfiction contains profanity and this fanfiction contains bad and violence, but I hope I don't come across to that that much. The last one I read with um Tess slash Blizzy, it didn't have much violence except for like the last part where like the this monster gets stabbed in the neck. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I won't have to insert a clip of me failing. So I did I am gonna put a twist on this, so every time if I come across profanity, I will insert a random clip from Dido Tugboat, which I've been watching from the past August. It was the dead of noon, and the sun shined down through the canopy of force like water through a strainer. Yet, despite the seemingly peaceful nature of the day, it was far from serene as the marching of footsteps cut through the stillness of the trees. The perpetrators, and excuse me, I may stumble, have said this. Disturbance could soon be seen emerging from the dense foliage, a con convoy of works about 20 strong. The ground shook like a war drum as the green mammoth's sized feet stuck the earth. Each of the roots was at least 7 feet tall. That's the height of a... Ha, I don't know what the height of. <laughs> a height of a... Um... Okay, I can't think of one. It's I'm dead inside. <laughs> with Ruption and the colors of olive, they carry with melee weapons of a lot variety, all cake and blood, with drip on hand them like like paint of a paintbrush. Does that count as like violence? Like quotation violence? But I don't think it's that bad, so I won't do anything with that sentence. The convoy convoy was now heading towards a clearing near a pass between two cliffs. The four scouts of the convoy began diligently scanning forward for signs of trouble. Unbeknownst to them, it was close to themselves that hit the true danger. Danger. Seem, seems to be about 20 of them, Jacob said, taking his, his eye away from the scope of his bull pups. Bull, bull pup. Bleah! Sniper to look at Piesa. Look at. It looks like they came fresh from some butchery too. Guess brow furrowed. They were tasking with sending out the orc herd to help Delta them deter them from attacking more villages. Piazza himself never really was a fan of needless slaughter, but judging of what, of what Jacob said, he might actually enjoy killing the same. So, what's our plan attack? Oh, by the way, I can't voice out Piazza because <laughs> I don't have the energy to I mean, last one I tried, I wanted to voice that baller, but my voice sounds like a squeaker, so I'm not going to even try for this. Well, it seems like the tallest one, my thought was a leader, so I'll take him out first. When they notice us, we'll rush in and meet head on. Piazza tilted his head, looking down the canopy can and back at Jacob. It was quite a long shot in and of itself, and all the footage getting in the way certainly didn't help. What if you miss? I won't! Jacob laid down his stomach again, looking through the stop of his sniper rifle. Well, I was gonna think of like air rifles, but why, why that? For some reason, it makes me think of like what I did. Okay, no, um, I did range in the past. <laughs> but his right arm, which Piazza initially assumed was simply well armored, opening up its plating as an apparatus similar to a weapon mag magazine extending from inside Jacob's arm, connecting itself to the rifle. Strange. It appears this sniper rifle isn't actually a fan of weapon. Pierce is thought, I recommend you get a bit closer and wear your bow. Then probably onto us after neutralizing their leader. Pierce simply nodded before jumping off the ridge, sliding across the cliff face down and tumbling the forest below. Like a snake through the underbush, he slowly approached the convoy. Summoning forth an arrow, he took a simple aim at the sky above. Why are you aiming in the sky? It's like nothing's gonna fall from the sky. 
Like, what's gonna rain? Snakes? Um, more of those bull monster things? It wasn't long at all until he heard Jacob's gun go off like a crack of thunder, followed soon by a, by a squelch of orcs instead of against the gun. He let go of the bowstring, letting his arrow fly forth like a mortar round into the sky. It, why I'm so confused of why he's aiming towards the sky, it's like nothing's gonna come up. With the glow of a mana, the arrow split into a whole cassette of arrows, raining down upon the convoy, stabbing the orcs like little hail. Hey, get out of my way! Okay, now I know why Piesa had to aim towards the sky, it's that. X move you do in BFS game. By now, they had noticed Piazza and began charging him. Ulo told the war cries, but the advance was cut short by a wall of bug shots. Piazza turned to look, and there was Jacob by his side, holding a bull pup shotgun in his right hand, and a pair of daggers in his left. Wow, that is very overpowered, I'm just saying. The two of them exchanged glances before Piazza summoned. Both his sword and two of them charging headlong into the fray. Shells casing from Jacob's shotgun cluttered to the ground like litter as Jacob's shotgun minced any orc standing his way. What, what, what was that? said Theodore. The orcs were not to be trifled with, however, as each of them was bulky enough to take two or three shotguns last and stand still. It was not long before Jacob had burned through all his shotgun rounds. Well, I'm a bit confused why he's using a shotgun and daggers when he is the Piazza champion. I need a backstory behind this. I'm probably slightly confused because I haven't read like out way before like Arc 2 happened. So I apologize if I ask too many questions. Why am I even apologizing on that? Polestering his shotgun on his back, Jacob tossed one of his daggers into the air, catching it into his right hand, nodding at Piazza. The two of them were like one of the blades as they cut up the orcs, moving too fast the orcs slowed. Is that a face out there? It wasn't long until the convoy has been dispatched, as it, and as the final orcs had begin rolled the rest, ah sorry, and as the final orcs had Roll to rest, Jacob flicked the orc blood off his daggers before once again shedding them on his back. So, now that's out. Now that's that, so we're with. P.S. is if walking alongside Jacob as he prepared to return to the academy. What two ship was still like on? Also, mind explaining why you aren't using granite weapons? Not one in first small child, are you? Jacob said, raising an eyebrow to P.S. Don't worry, I'm not either. Ah. <sighs> The reason why I don't use a mana rep is because I can't. Nor can I use mana shielding. My mana has been permanently slanted. Jacob paused for a moment. His expression gained an aura of me malevolence about it, as if he was attempting to keep a death glare by Bane. The people responsible not only for that, but for my arm, my eye, and irreparable damage to not only my life. But the lives countless for others. On the as the dragon's blood king. Okay, so I said in the last map if my theory is that like the rest of the champs had would have like elemental powers, but I was so wrong on that. <laughs> oh no. I'm so sorry guys. I think I should I should not I should not jump to the conclusion. I don't remember much about life before I was abducted. A stray memory here and there, but nothing much else. What do I do? However, it was that I was abandoned by my parents around age 3, left to wander the streets of Stra Strata. I was remembered by no one, kept for by no one. Naturally, I was an easy target for the dragon's blood. After all, who's gonna notice of some random street child like myself when missing? It, it looks like a monster, shivered Theodore. Scientifically speaking, said Vodok. There are no monsters in the big harbor. I hope. It took Jacob at least 10 whole seconds to release, realize he was awake. There was no light, no sound, no comforting. He after waited to placate him into the alleyway he called home. There, were, there was only slow 
with the mixed ways of the ship he was on, or at least he assumed it was a ship. For all he knew, he might be in the arms of a giant, trying to hush him back to sleep. He has wished that was true. At least he could take comfort in the fact that Thor was looking after him. The smell of the mild dewy wood was overwhelming. Or perhaps it wasn't really all that strong. Jacob, however, had nothing to distract his mind. So the mild dew filled every orifice in his body like water into a man drowning man's Who's there? He tried sitting up, or at least in the direction he assumed was upwards. Better to be sitting than be laying down against the raw wood. Oh, I could feel it. The fling of raw wood, that must not be comfortable. With splinters stuck under his skin like bamboo beneath fingernails, yet as he pulled himself up, he felt the duct tape noose pull back against his mouth, killing. Hank? For a call. Yeah, yeah, yes? Feeling around, he could make out what that he was inside some sort of box, perhaps tall enough to sit if. If he tilted his head to the side, but definitely not tall enough to stand in. Moving his hands around some more, his fingers found just in a small hole in the side of the bus, just big enough to peer an eye out. Wait, is, can he breathe in the box? Can he? Yet, yeah. peering out in the yield, no more than information that what he already has, just darkness. Darkness and mildew. For some reason, I'm getting like the sense of claustrophobic because I am claustrophobic I hate dark confined spaces so much it just makes me not want to like be in there anymore so that's what I'm feeling I'm feeling claustrophobic out of this Jacob remembered the story he had heard from one of the, from one of the other kids he met near his alley a fairy tale about the girl trapped in the tall tower he wondered if the girl if the girl was thinking the same thing he was when he stared out the, the hole in the box. He wondered if the girl's tower was at least bigger than the crampled cube he was crammed into. The kid who told the story, Wabi, who, who probably called him a adult, whatever that means for wonder that, for wondering that, blah. Jacob never really cared much for Wabi, but right now, even his presence would be better than nothing. Left with nothing else, he let the mild do accompany him to sleep. They took us. They took us off the ship and loaded us into a truck or some sort. By then, they had gone at least two days without food or water. So when they unpacked us and heard us like a cow of the prison, you were too weak to resist. Jacob remembered the dog in the yard of the house of an old man he visited every once in a while. It was quite a large dog with teeth like steak knives and was always chained up inside the cage with metal bars two inches in diameter. Am I thinking a... What's that dog called? Like a pit bull or something? Is that... I think that's what, that's what coming... That's what... Well, that's what type of breed that comes to my head. Peering out through the bars of his cell, he now emphasized that with with that dog situation all too well, even the food the men's but ta him tastes like dog food. But then again, he used the taste of dog food. He did not complain about it after all, though. Ha am I the only person who like wonders what dog food really tastes like to humans? Because you know, dog food's like obviously like um formulated for dogs, and he did not to complain about. It at all though. Some poor kid in a few cells down from him wouldn't quit whining until the guards got fed up and hauled him off somewhere else. Jacob hadn't heard from him since. He deduced that as uncomfortable as the cell might be, it was still better than the box from before. And he'd rather accept just accept what he got and not risking getting dealt an even worse hand. It seemed, however, that fate had other plans for him. Not long after he finished his meal, a man flanked by two guards approached his cell. He was donning a green surgical uniform. Come with me, he said in a extremely cheerful voice. It's time for your checkup. The gang does not does plenty of other things illegal twisted things. Drugs, prostitution, gambling, arms smuggling, human trafficking, contract killing. <coughs> but not compared to the things they 
there for those three long years after I was abducted. After that, for whatever reason, they changed what they did with children like myself that they captured. They trained us like to be. They trained us to be child soldiers. Oh no! I remember. I think I saw some news of like parents hiring random people to kidnap kids and fly them all the way to like military base camps where they are treated just like this. I read on the news, it was like a long time ago, and the reason why parents did that, that, that that's, it's like some form of like horrible punishment, although I see that like as really harsh and I don't think that kids should be treated like that. Coming at you live, Rukatu's opinion on this type of child punishment. It was from them that I learned how to shoot, how to kill. Now Theodore is smaller than Oliver, but he's also quick and clever. Everything I know, I learned from them. They gave me a prosthetic arm to replace the one I lost. But why did he lose his arm? I want to know like how he lost his arm. Was it in a war? I reset all of it, but what was I to do? I had no idea where I was. I had no family to return to. I had no way to escape. So I bid my time, waiting for six whole years until I finally escaped. Piazza turned to look at Jacob. His eyes seemed to almost be glazed over in thought. So he was still curious about what exactly happened to Jacob to result in his condition. He could emphasize what Jacob has been through through all too well. Some things are better left alone. I'm just a little like confused of how he lost his arm had to get prosthetic. Because two things come to mind. The first thing is like he lost in war or like the pe and or he had to get his arm amputated. I don't know, but maybe I'm just jumping to conclusions. Why must castles be filled with so many rooms and hallways? Jasper asked himself as he strolled along. Suddenly, this person called Jasper appears, and I don't know who he is. The interior of the castle was lined with banners of red and gold, embroidered with the symbols of Redcliffe royalty. His shoes made everything from clock to grease as they touched garden bricks and polished wood alike. Interestingly, I prefer a smaller house, one where I actually be able to, you know, set foot in most of the rooms. More than once in a blue moon, Jasper paused before looking at the nearby guy. What do you think? Huh? What? The guy said, looking as if he was just waking up from deep sleep. You're here with me, don't you? The guard rubbed his eyes, looking dazed as he had forgotten who he was. Yeah, sure. Get to here, Jasper continued, beginning to turn around. Now here. Oh, didn't see you there, he said, looking first at the guy who had caught by surprise, then down at his whole arm, which was pointed at him menacingly. Shall we dance? The guards broke through. By the by the order of King Bruce, I ordered you to stand down. Jasper simply cracked a smile. Okay, so this is a different location. We're not in Jacob's situation. It's this so-called guy called Jasper, which I don't know who the heck he is. Um, before suddenly a large war having a thick layer of hot black like Red Mana came between each of his two faces. I'll take that as a yes then. Okay, that's it. I am slightly confused on his backstory. I have this feeling though about the backstory of Jacobs. I kind of felt like it should be toned down a bit because I'm starting to slightly, I mean like tiny bit, slightly sense a Mary Sue thing. And I am not a fan of like Mary Sue stuff. I actually once read a fan fiction and it was completely Mary Sue. There was like no diversity, no backstory. And I felt like the person who wrote the fan fiction did not do any further research. But to write a fan fiction like this, I think the main thing to do is to know the lore of the game or TV show really well in order to write a fan fiction. And I remember reading the TMM fan fiction. I did like one video. I didn't do a lot of research because there was no character development in the 
in the man murderer, but that's just a long time ago, and I will not go back to writing another fanfiction ever again. I just read the personalities of each person. But I promise in chapter 25 there's gonna be Saul's part, in chapter 26 there's Faze's part, so next video will be chapter 25. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this chapter.